Okay, in 10 minutes or less, in today's video, I'm going to go over a quick explanation, a brief introduction to what power is. We'll give you the definition, the symbols, the equations. We'll do one simple example at the end of this video. We'll talk about what horsepower is, and in the description of this video, I will put some links to some additional videos that you can watch for some additional problems and examples, if you would like to see those. Okay, power. What is power? Power is simply the rate at which work is done, is how fast work is done. The idea is, in general, like this. If you have two people and they do the same amount of work, but one person does that work faster than that person, you guessed it, has a higher power output. It is the ratio of the amount of work done and the time it takes to do that work. Simply take the work and divide it by the time, which we will get to in just a moment. Okay, the symbol for power is a P. That's right, power P. The unit is the watt, which we abbreviate capital W, James Watt. Well, what is a watt? It is a joule second. If you do one joule of work in one second, you have a power output of one watt. That's right. One watt is when you do one joule of work in one second. Well, what is a joule? That is a very good question. A joule is a newton meter. So one joule is one newton meter. So if you take one newton and raise it one meter, you do one joule of work. For example, if you take a tenth of a kilogram, 100 grams, and you raise it up against gravity. I abbreviated, I approximated, rounded 9.81 to 10, and you do that over one meter, then you do one joule of work. If you do that in one second, then your power output is one watt. Not that much power, really. Okay, the equation is simply power is equal to work divided by time. It's the ratio of the amount of work divided by the amount of time. Work is measured in joules, time is measured in seconds, so it's power is joules per second, which we abbreviate again, capital W watt. Now, you've probably heard the term watt used a lot, maybe with an appliance like this is a hair dryer. It has three settings, 930 watts, 1,000 watts, and 1,100 watts. Well, what does that mean? That means at this highest power setting, this hair dryer is going to convert 1,100 joules of electric potential energy into heat or into the motor also to drive that hair dryer. 1,100 joules of work per second is 1100 watts. Also, you probably heard watts with respect to light bulbs. This is a 40 watt light bulb. That means that this light bulb converts 40 joules of electric energy, electric potential energy into light every second, 40 joules per second, 40 watts. All right, the higher the wattage, the more energy is converted and the brighter the bulb per second, and the brighter the bulb is going to be. All right, power output. What is power? Power is the rate at which work is done. It's simply the ratio of the work time to time. Now, in a lot of problems, you're not going to get the work in, and the time. You might get the time, but you might be given, for example, the force and the distance over which that force is applied. Now, remember, work is force and distance. It's the force and the distance over which that force is applied. Now, a lot of times, especially when you're raising something up, you don't get the force because that would be too easy. You get the mass. And you need to remember, if you raise an object up with a certain mass, you can multiply it times the, you can multiply the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81, and you get the force that you need to apply to raise that object up at a constant velocity. You multiply that by the distance, you divide by the time, and you get the power. Okay, this mg is the force, this is the distance, the force applied over distance is when you do work and then you divide by the time. Now also, you'll notice that we have force and distance over time. Distance over time is also the velocity. So you will often get a problem where you might be given to raise an object up with a certain velocity. Well, you take the force you have to apply, which is the weight of the object, and the velocity over which that object is being raised, or the velocity at which that object is being raised, you multiply those together and you get the power output needed to do that. Okay, and once again, if you're raising something up, you take the mass acceleration due to gravity, that gives you the force, and then you multiply that by the velocity, and you get the power output. And you'll see that in one of the examples that we're going to do. Also, as you remember, work energy theorem, power, excuse me, work and energy are directly related to each other. So if you change the energy of something, you can also, you do work, 
So if power is also the change in energy divided by time. So if we raise something up and give it more potential energy, or we increase or decrease the velocity of something with its kinetic energy, and you divide that by time, you'll get the power output needed to do that change in object's potential or kinetic energy. All right? Now, what about this thing really quick, the horsepower? The horsepower was termed, was a coin, coin, a coin that was termed, a term that was coined, is a term that was coined by James Watt in the late 1800s because there were a lot of horses running around, and those horses had a certain power output. They could do a certain amount of work over a certain amount of time. And then there was this thing called the steam engine that was coming into play, and people wanted to know, well, how powerful is that steam engine? Well, Watt said, well, that steam engine has the power of four horses. Well, what does that mean? And these are draft horses, working horses. Now, it's kind of an imprecise number that he came up with, but today we use the conversion factor of one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. Well, what does that mean? What is one horsepower? Well, Watt came up with this idea that one horsepower was 33,000 foot pounds per minute. Now we're talking about horses and obviously every horse is different, but he used this number as an approximation. 33,000 foot pounds per minute. Now this is foot times pounds per minute. Now I'm going to take this and divide 33,000 by 60 so we get 550 foot pounds per second. I know to me it seems like a more reasonable number. I can wrap my head around that a little bit more easily. Foot times pound. That means that if I can take 550 pounds and raise it one foot in one second, foot pounds per second, then I do one horsepower. Then my power output is one horsepower. Okay, and this is foot times pounds, so any combination of foot and pounds that equals 550 in one second will be a power output of one horsepower. So for example, if I could lift 55 pounds, I think I can lift 55 pounds, I probably could raise it up the stairs 10 feet, but could I do that in one second? No, probably not. Probably take me a little longer than one second. But if I could take 55 pounds and raise it 10 feet in one second, then my power output would be one horsepower. Or another simple combination, if I could lift 550 pounds one foot in one second, then again, my power output would be one horsepower. 550 times one is 550, and 55 times 10 is 550. So any combination of pounds and feet that gives me 550 in one second would be a power output of one horsepower. All right. Let's go over a relatively simple, straightforward example. We have a crane. It's going to lift a load of 1,200 kilograms. The distance it's going to raise that is 35 meters. It's going to take 11.5 seconds, and we want to know what is the power output of that crane. Well, let's write down our equation. Power is work divided by time. Now, it doesn't say, oh, it does so much work in so much time. It says this mass this distance in this time. So now we're going to think, okay, what's another equation? Well, we could think of force and distance. Now we know this is a mass and we're raising it up. So we're going to use our acceleration due to gravity. The mass times the acceleration due to gravity is the force. It's the weight of the object. We're going to use the same force, raise it as a constant velocity. We know the distance, we know the time, and now we can calculate the power output because the mass is 1,200. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.81. The distance is 35 meters, and the time it takes is 11.5 seconds. Multiply these three. Divide by 11.5, and you get that, the power output of that crane. To do that amount of work in 11.5 seconds is 30, approximately 36,000 watts. Now, if you want to know horsepower, you just divide this by 746 because one watt, one horsepower, 746 watts, and you get that the power output of that crane is about 48 horsepower. Okay, so there you go. That's a brief introduction, a little bit about horsepower, a simple example. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, there's some links in the description of this video to some additional example problems for power. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do all the following things. Three things. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Subscribe to my channel. 
get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos, and then leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next video.